What's up everyone? Welcome back to Cuphead. I'm going to tackle Inkwell Owl 2. This is home to some of the more notorious bosses in the game. And I mean it, these bosses are pretty, pretty rough. King Dice, or I should be more specific, the minions of King Dice, they're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me so hard later on. I'm not looking forward to it. Guys, hang on. Thank the stars I caught up with you. I believe I found a way out of this mess you're in. Hot dog, have you? <laughs> Your strength is growing. You'll soon be a match for that no good King Dice and maybe even a devil himself. Imagine the devil just losing to a couple of coffee mugs on bodies. Yeah, that would be embarrassing. Golly, do you really think? I do. <laughs> I do. But you'll never get close to the devil unless you already have those soul contracts in hand. Only then will you get a chance to turn the tables on that fiend. So when the time comes, do the right thing. Words of wisdom from Elder Kettle. He alludes to the fact that there are two endings in this game. I will be showing off both the endings in the final part. Anyway, Inkwell Isle 2 is a carnival theme. A lot of the bosses and stage designs will revolve around the circus setting, and of course there's a there's even a reverse gravity stage. Why do those keep popping up every time I do a let's play? <laughs> of course, those are my least favorite things of all time. This boss is suddenly in Candyland. This is Baroness Von Bun Bun. She's rather difficult. Bun Bun has a couple of different minions that helps her out. This guy in particular will jump up and then bounce down creating a splash that can damage you. The order in which the minions pop out is completely random. Sometimes you'll get the gumball dispenser, other times you get this jumping guy first, or hell, maybe even the floating waffle in midair. It's freaking strange. <laughs> this guy right here will shoot gumballs up into the air. You have to avoid getting hit by them on the way down. He'll stay pretty much close to the middle of the screen so you don't have to worry about contact damage if you're on the edge of the screen. Here's the giant jawbreaker. He basically tracks you across the screen. There's also a tiny jawbreaker that follows the big guy, and I freaking just died right there. <laughs> I wonder if the pattern changes. I'm going to have to assume no, it's probably going to be the same pattern. Oh yeah it is, it's the bouncing pie guy again. He's not too hard to avoid, he will pause on the way down every time. I think it's going to be the gumball dispenser again. Oh, no, it's actually the Jawbreaker, so it does change in between matches. <laughs> the Smoke Bomb is one of the best items to have. If you time it right, you'll pass right through attacks. During the Jawbreaker phase, a tiny guy will start running across the floor. He is rather annoying to deal with, at least for me, because I can barely see that dude. I like it when Von Bun Bun comes out and shakes her fist at you, she's going like, Stop killing my friends, you bastard, those are the only people I talk to. <laughs> Here's the gumball dispenser again. What you want to do is stand to the side of the screen and avoid the avoid getting hit by the falling gumballs. It's very easy. Oh, that's strange. Fairness Bun Bun I can't even say her name correctly. Bum 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 Bun. She didn't even do her waffle attack this time. I'm genuinely surprised about that. The final phase has Fun Bun Bun throw her head at you, and it does a damn good job of tracking you across a field. The head will aim for the center of Cuphead. So in other words, it's going to try to cut you off and go to wherever you're about to go, basically. It's pretty annoying, and this is where the smoke bomb comes in handy. You also have this peppermint candy that rolls across the floor, and despite it being half pink and half white, it's still pink and therefore you should bounce off of it. This boss fight will make you hate candy. No, I'm kidding. Baroness Fun Bun Bun is slightly difficult, but with the smoke bomb and the chaser, and the spread gun, the boss is made a little bit easier to manage. And with that, we just got the soul contract for the Baroness. Several more to go. Despite the large number of bosses, which I think is 20 bosses in all, Cuphead is not a very long game. You can beat this anywhere from 2 to 6 hours. 
You can't catch me unless you take a shortcut. That's what some punk kids did last week. It's the only way they could have beaten me to the rides. Say, maybe you could show me where the shortcut is around here? Maybe you just gotta go fast, buddy. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that guy was talking about. The next boss is... Oh, fucking Wally Warbos, who is a dick. You gotta fly the biplane for this guy. This bird will have a couple of different tricks up his sleeve. His first form will have him shooting bullets at you. Nothing too bad for the moment, but it escalates quickly. The eggs Wally shoots at you will break into three pieces. You'll be fine if you stay directly above or below where it shatters. You also have these throwaway enemies, which I call side chicks because they're just there and they're annoying to deal with. The second form is interesting. Warbos will shoot out some fearsome feathers at you in a bullet hell pattern, and they are freaking annoying to get around, especially with the side chicks there. That bomb is a fucking lifesaver. Here's phase three of the fight, and I honestly hate those orbiting eggs. Wally will shoot out his ray gun at you, and some of those bullets will be pink, but honestly, the floating eggs are the most dangerous things to avoid. Just remember the shrink ability that Cuphead has in the biplane. Wally will move around the screen in an infinity motion, or a figure eight. Hitting him is really awkward because the eggs are a shield and that they will block your shots like crazy here. Nice, took him out. Hate that form of Wally Warbles is the worst. But here's the final phase of Warbles, which is arguably ten times worse. Featherless Bird is being airlifted by two other birds, and the angling here is really tough. I don't have bombs. This is where the big bird will shoot a Valentine's heart at you, and that heart will shoot bullets at you in a spread fashion. The two nursing birds will also attack you by shooting up pills and those breaking up into several pieces. If the pills are pink, you can parry them. The main bird will also spit out random junk that is kind of difficult to anticipate where they're about to end up on the screen. I have to wait for Warbles to fly to the right side of the screen to get some shots in. Hopefully not get boxed in by those damn birds. In any other shoot 'em up, you would have the option to at least turn around or have a weapon that fires straight behind you. Oh, well, fuck it. Ah! I was close that time. What the hell, game? Yeah, I'm not showing that whole entire boss fight again. It's kind of a tedious process. <laughs> this Wally Warbles takes a long time to kill. Screw your pink pills. If you have any specials in store, use them now. Kill him and put him in the oven. Yummy, Easter is around the corner and I'm fancying family dinner. You know what, I just love family dinners in general. <laughs> As for this boss, I think he's my least favorite boss in the whole entire game. He's just kind of annoying to deal with. His, uh, or Your shots will get blocked by the second form shield, so have fun with that. And not only that, the odd angle of his third and final form is just a nuisance. But alas, Wally Warbles is dead. He's gone. He lost his marbles. Freaking hate him. <laughs> and trust me, that is definitely one of the harder bosses in the game to deal with. And with that, a path will open up to the second mausoleum in the game. The special you get there is, um, okay. It has its perks, but I only use it once. Specifically on the dragon at the end of aisle 2, which is 20 minutes from now. Don't worry, this video will be... Oh god, it's still 30 minutes. <laughs> it's gonna be shorter than the last video I posted, but it's gonna be way longer than the rest of the videos I post for this playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as it's not over an hour. If my capture reaches over an hour, it starts to skip frames. I was recording Arkham City, that's the next playthrough I'm going to do, 
and I made it to freaking Penguin's Generators, and what do you know, the recording started skipping all over the place. I was thinking to myself, oh, I gotta do this tedious part again in an otherwise really fun game. I, I just died in a mausoleum. Okay, that happened. Well, okay then. <laughs> Using the parry button close to the ground is not as reliable as using it at the height of your jump. That's kind of what happened there. And also be forewarned that the parry is not a double jump. It will bounce you into the air if you hit a bullet with it. But parrying in this game is somewhat similar to the Insta Shield ability from Sonic 3. In that game, the Hedgehog also had a quick mid-air move that, if timed right, Sonic will face through most attacks. Usage may vary. I personally love the Insta Shield for its attack range, not so much for its defensive capability. When did this turn into a Sonic commentary? <laughs> and more importantly, when is that Sonic Origins collection coming out? It's been a year since it's been announced, and it's almost close to the release of the second movie. What's going on, Sega? I'm not one for rushing out products, but they said before the second movie comes out, and we're already almost a week before the second movie, and there's still no Origins collection. Where is it at? I knew if I rooted around here, I could find something special for you, but I didn't know I'd get trapped again. Why so surprised? Thanks for saving me a second time. Take this magical super art, which blocks the text, and I'll see if I can find another. And thus we get the second ultimate ability, Invincibility. Insert Boris meme here. Uh, just like in GoldenEye, the movie, being invincible isn't completely foolproof. It only really lasts for about 5-10 to 10 seconds at most, so you gotta make the most out of it. His obsession with death and numbers is legendary. This guy is talking about the water spirit at the pond, Quadratus, or Quadratus? I, I don't know how to pronounce that name. He's basically your game's death counter. Each time you go to Quadratus, he'll tell you how many times you've died. I'm not sure if he counts manual resets from the pause menu though. It has to be straight up dying, and he'll count that. Funfair Fever is pretty bad. <laughs> Mainly the platforming section in the middle of the stage. The section in the beginning is not too bad. The trampolines will go wherever you go and you just need to dash and jump over the walls. And you got these balloons. Damn that kid from Spider-Man 2. She keeps letting go of the balloons. <laughs> Bounce off the pink balloons while avoiding the other ones. Be wary of the rolling balls on the ground. Shooting the walkers will make the circus ball roll faster. For the platforming section coming up. Carefully scout out where the balls will hit. You also have to tend to these acrobats that will form a wall. It's a lot to manage at one time, but it's not too bad. It's really the last part of the stage that's troublesome. Don't! <laughs> that was bad. The first mini boss of the stage is shooting the balls at the targets in the pattern. It goes up, middle, down, up, middle, down. As long as you keep track of that pattern, you should be fine. Second mini boss is gonna shoot ducks into the air. It's easy to avoid, you just stay close on the first volley and then you move back on the second volley. Enemies on the platforms just jump up and down. The chaser makes short work of these guys. But there is an off-screen threat, and it is a hot dog. I just killed I just got killed by Relish. <laughs> I like Relish, it's probably the best topping for a hot dog in my opinion. Next to mustard. Then everybody wants to make a big deal of ketchup, but I think it's alright. It's kind of overrated. It has a not that good taste to me. <laughs> I liked it as a kid, just not anymore. It's too sweet. So I've seen the first couple of episodes of the Cuphead show, and I was pleasantly surprised. I actually liked what I saw. The show's funny, and it has that strange humor that reminds me of cartoons from the 2000s mixed with the 1930s animation, which is something I thought I would never say out loud, but it's true. <laughs> 
In terms of video game shows, I still think Castlevania has Cuphead beat, but it's like comparing apples to oranges. I mean, you got comedy versus bloody action and horror. I actually like bloody action and horror better, but that's just me. Honestly, it's very hard to make a show or a movie that's based off of a game because the people in charge of the movie or show, they have to play the video games if they want to get the story right. Or if the game had a bare-bones story like, say, Pac-Man. No, seriously, what's the lore of Pac-Man? Why does he eat dots? And why are there several TV shows based off of Pac-Man? It's kind of crazy. <laughs> you kind of have to pull stuff out of your ass. An example of a good adaptation, and I don't know about the quality of the show itself, but I'll give it credit where it's due, Sonic X. The Adventure 1 and 2 arcs of Sonic X were probably the best the show ever got. But enough about that, back to Cuphead, which has a really good show by the way. <laughs> uh, this part is kind of annoying, the mini boss is throwing condiments at you and you have to avoid it while platforming. There will be times where dodging the condiments and staying on the platform is near impossible because of the timing of everything. <laughs> the deaf animations in this game, you gotta give it credit, they're really creative. The characters in this game blow up in the most comical ways possible. I mean, sure, they would have played the situation and the deaf animations kind of straight by having them fall over, but not this game, no, they have to explode. Spectacularly. Now I have more coins. That means I want to go to Pork Rinds right now to get more stuff. Let's see here, I got coffee. It's a relatively useful item. It will automatically refill your special meter, even if you're not doing anything. It's a slow process, but when you're attacking the bosses, the coffee will help out with the energy gain. Who ever heard of a barbershop trio? If we can't find our fourth member, we'll never sound right again. Be a pal and let us know if you spot him, will you? Eh, maybe. Here's my favorite boss in the game. It's Jimmy the Great. Jimmy the Great will have a few strange attacks up his sleeve. He'll pull out a treasure chest which will throw several items at the player. Jimmy will also throw a giant energy blast from his face. You can avoid this by staying low to the screen. Here with the next phase, it will feature a bunch of walls coming in to crush you. The only way to get through this is to shoot the sections with the faces on them. Watch out for the saw blades, they like to wander around the screen. This kind of reminds me of a Gradius style of level where walls come in to crush you. <laughs> it's definitely more in line with that stage design. Part 3 of this super amazing boss. The sarcophagus will throw dozens of enemies and shots at you. One pattern will be in a spiral type of attack, and you have to go in between the bullets. Whoops, took a dumb hit there. Let me just end this quickly before I die. It's very easy to get carried away with attacking in this game. This attack is a reference to Pinocchio, one of my all-time favorite movies. The puppet will shoot in a dozen different directions with bullets and all types of spread shots and stuff. Some of them will go straight for your location, others will just stray off into a different area of the screen. It's kind of weird. There's also the genie's hat, which I think is a reference to Aladdin, but I don't remember anybody wearing a genie's hat in that film. Oh wait, no, there's Jafar, never mind. <laughs> it's probably the most annoying thing to deal with in this fight, because it chases you around. I like the animation in the background, it kind of reminds me of DuckTales Remastered or Half Genie Hero, just the way the 3D is incorporated with the sprites. In fact, I'm not even sure if that's 3D or an actual miniature in the background, it just looks amazing. 
The last phase is pretty easy, but I won't blame you if you get caught off guard because I almost did. The pyramids will circle around the screen and shoot a beam that's shaped like a plus symbol. While the pyramid's doing that, Jimmy will shoot beams of his own at you, which will target straight for where you're at. I always love that boss. There are so many different cool attacks and patterns to watch out for, and also the background design is freaking amazing. I wish more games incorporated 2D and 3D into the same gameplay, but oh well. Oh, they actually answer my prayers. Interesting. I'm not sure about the next boss I'm about to fight, he's pretty insane. Good day for a well it's on. Beppy the Clown. Oh my god, this guy is cheap sometimes. He starts out by riding his go-kart kind of unpredictably. Beppy will dash towards you from like left to right and then from right to left. You jump over and dash at the height of your jump. The duck targets from the right side of the screen will mess up your jumps, and drop the occasional bomb. Part 2, Beppy the Balloon. There are a bunch of things that will kill you right here. What killed me that time? You gotta watch out for those hoses that spawn in the balloons. Apparently the hot air around that area hurts you. That's bullshit right there. But the way the second phase starts with Beppy falling off the cart is hilarious. <laughs> that will never get old. There are several things to look out for. Balloon dogs for one thing, they chase you around the screen and are generally annoying to take out, so bust out the spread shot. But more importantly, the train will pass by every few seconds. There's even a tell in the background to let you know when the train's about to come by. The passengers, they will hurt you if you touch them, so be careful. After enough bullets to the face, Beppy will ride on his pony and shoot horseshoes. They jut out horizontally across the screen and then rain down from the top of the screen. He'll also shoot the horseshoes in a wave pattern, kind of like a Medusa head from the Castlevania games. Oh, he got ringed out again. Looks like I'm playing Soul Calibur now. <laughs> Beppy's final form. Not as dangerous as a second form, but you still have to watch out for a few things. It's the goddamn train. It makes a comeback and is even faster than ever. Beppy will also spit out a couple of smaller enemies along the ground who will eventually get run over by the train. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Your best bet is to stay on the platforms. Oh no, I'm lactose intolerant. Actually, I got a question. What is that substance that's inside Cuphead and Mugman's heads? It looks like milk, but I'm not sure if it is milk. I'm, I'm just gonna assume that it is milk because that's what it looks like. Or maybe it's Milk Plus from A Clockwork Orange. That explains the ultra violence in this game. Well, ultra cartoon violence that parents will probably still have a problem with because 1930s cartoons are violent. That's how Tom and Jerry got neutered in the 1980s and 90s. Whenever that first movie came out where the characters started talking, I knew I was in for some shit. That was a terrible movie. And I have yet to see the new Tom and Jerry movie that came out a few months ago or a year ago at this point, I don't know. I'm just not that interested. 2010's slapstick comedy is not the same as 1940's slapstick comedy, if you know what I mean. It's like with each passing decade, everything gets a bit more sanitized and safe. Will we see another Attitude Era in WWE? No. Will there be a Spaceballs 2? No. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna have to live with it. 
so the gimmick with this stage, which is called Funhouse Frazzle, is reverse gravity. God damn it, why does this feature keep popping up in my playthroughs? I blame Gravity Man for this. Anyway, you have to watch out for traffic. If you see the honks are coming from the top of the screen, jump down with the pink cards. Vice versa of the traffic's on the floor. You cannot destroy the cars, only the giant duck enemies. This wall mini boss is, um, it's there, it's an enemy. It will spawn out these cars and shoot lips at you. Cuphead does not want your kisses! Second half of this stage will introduce bombless pits in these um, star turrets which are indestructible. The turrets will shoot in four directions, but they will also shoot in eight directions, which is weird. So it basically starts out in a plus pattern, up, down, left, right, and then it will turn around to shoot in an X symbol fashion. Chaser is really good for this part, as it always is. The enemies will come really quickly here. I'm not the biggest fan of anti-gravity in video games unless if it's Sonic 3 or Castlevania Bloodlines because, at least with those games, everything is all quick and snappy. Here it's just, no. <laughs> I hate it. And you have to aim your gun in the reverse order of what everything is mapped out on. So if you want to aim your gun up, upside down, which is actually down, you have to press down on the D-pad. There are a couple of trombone mini-bosses in this stage. The next one will shoot exclusively on, exclusively on the top platforms. The one I just dealt with was shooting on the lower platforms. I am cheesing this section with the chaser. It keeps you out of a lot of dangerous situations that you normally have to get yourself into. If only Cuphead and Mugman had the chasers equipped when they were dealing with the devil. That would have changed everything. This level even has the Metropolis Zone spike platforms. It's pretty cool. This wall attacks pretty much the same way the first wall did, except this one swipes its tongue at you. Pretty disgusting. After destroying this wall, that will be the end of the stage. I didn't get any parries from that? Boo! Okay, so the thing about the parry score is, you have to parry objects that are not a part of the stage proper. Those pink cards that I used to reverse gravity, they don't count for the score. The score only counts if I, bo if I parry bullets or enemies. That's it. The next boss is another one of my favorites. I'm going to equip the invincibility and the extra health perk as this one is very tricky. He is Grim Matchstick, the dragon. Well, hey there, fellas. Come to watch my little show, have you? They say juggling is a bit like parrying. Tough at first, but soon you can string them together swimmingly. I'm hoping to get to four someday. Four in a row. Yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? I'm going to have to parry several things in a row, am I? <laughs> I just have a bad feeling about this. Here's the last boss of Inkwall out, too. Pretty hard to dodge, he's got several different attacks that are tricky. First off, the dragon will shoot ray beams from his eyes, but the, his main attack is uh, throwing fireballs in a wave pattern. The hitbox on those is specifically the core of the fireball, so you're fine just you're fine passing through the smoke trails, those are not a problem. Grim will also try to prot you from underneath with his tail. Kind of invasive if I say so myself. The ray beams will occasionally have pink on the tips of them. There's also a massive bombless pit down below that's very easy to fall into. Now, you don't die instantly if you get thrown down there, but it's very hard to recover if you do. Phase 2 is a little bit tougher, and by a little bit I mean a lot. There are sentient fires that will throw themselves at you. Switch over to the chaser gun and stay as high as possible. The fireballs are very unpredictable here.
Oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that is a genuinely difficult part of the fight, but honestly, it only gets harder from there. I do like the background here. Just like with the Jimmy boss fight, I don't know if that's a 3D animation or if that's an actual model they use, but it looks gorgeous. How did I not get hit there? <laughs> you know, sometimes I play really carefully and I get hit multiple times. Other times I just play with Reckless Abandon and I don't get hit. I have reverse luck. Oh shit. High ground, high ground, high ground. I, I freaking hate these fireballs, by the way. They're completely random. They just throw themselves all over the place. It's really confusing where they're about to end up next. This is why I have the extra hit for this boss fight. I get hurt a lot here. Oh, thank god I got him. Part 3. The dragon goes Hydra and will spit out fireballs that will split into 4 bullets if you shoot them. But I do have a good comeback for this phase. Trust me, this super art is really good for this boss. I am invincible! You equip the invincibility perk, you time it right, and you can pass right through that flamethrower attack, which hawks up a decent portion of the screen. That flamethrower attack is very, very difficult to avoid. Now I can jump to my death. The good thing about Cuphead is, whenever you defeat a boss, your hitbox is turned off. That way, any attack that is still active on the screen won't cheaply kill you in a Kaizo Trap scenario. That is a nice feature that I wish more games would do. Anyway, tune in for part 3 where I take on Inkwell R3. Devil will take their heads 